In this video, we'll explore Greek mathematics after Euclid. Uh, this time period, we're looking at 300 BC to 600 AD, and this is during the major time of the Roman Empire. Alexandria was able to remain part of Greece until about 30 BC, and it was up to that point that we see much of the innovations in science and mathematics come out of the university. Uh, when the empire did split, Greece became part of Eastern Rome, and you see a slow decline in the Roman Empire, as well as the scientific innovation coming from the Greeks. Much of their innovation was replaced with compilations and commemoratization works. The greatest mathematician of antiquity and one of the three greatest of all time was Archimedes, who lived during this time. He was able to come up with some ingenious inventions and some great mathematic concepts that have, are still around and have been used to make even more strong advances in mathematics. Uh, for example, during the siege of Syracuse, he said to have created many different contraptions to help keep the Romans away from Syracuse, and it helped for three years before they finally had to surrender. He also was able to do a significant amount in mathematics and science. Uh, he came up with the concept of the first law of hydrostatics by trying to figure out how to determine whether King Huron's crown was truly made of gold. And it said that he was in the baths and realized this first law of hydrostatics, and he said, Eureka, and went running to the king completely naked to tell him what he'd found, hence where the term Eureka comes from. He published many different books in mathematics, and he's one of the first people to start to add, come up with the idea of how to approximate pi, and using the idea of inscribed polygons to get closer and closer to that of a circle. He began the concepts of calculus by looking at concepts with the spiral of Archimedes, the quadrature of a parabola, and his what's considered Archimedes' tomb. Now the component to Archimedes' tomb that's interesting is the idea of what's on, inscribed on it. When he, had his, when he wanted his tomb made, he wanted to have a sphere inside of a cylinder where the sphere and the cylinder are the same height because finding the relationship between the two of those was something that he was most proud for finding. Uh, the tomb had been forgotten, but Cicero found it and gave it the respect and the attention that he felt it deserved as he came through with the Romans. Uh, another important mathematician at the time was Aristosthenes. Uh, he was said to live around 276 to about 195 BC, and he was asked to serve as the chief librarian at the university. He was said to be well-rounded in all fields and was often known as Beta because he was very good at many things but never the best at anything. Uh, he was known to have come up with many different achievements such as measuring the circumference of the earth, creating the sieve to help find prime numbers, and then creating the first known map of the world. Now the idea of finding the circumference of the earth is quite impressive when you think about the time period where there are still people that thought that the earth was flat and he's coming up with the idea of the earth having a circumference of the sphere. And what he used was his knowledge of Cyrene and Alexandria and their distance apart from one another. Uh, he was able to look at when the sun hit at the same place at the same time and see if there's a stick in the ground at Cyrene, because it's at the Tropic of Cancer, there was no shadow, but at Alexandria there was a 7 degree shadow, and he's able to use that with the proportion of figuring the difference of the angle measure using the distance from Cyrene and then the Earth's circumference. And he was able to get it very close, and it's quite impressive how close he's able to get with the measurements that they had. A third important Greek mathematician at the time was Apollonius, uh, who's considered the great geometer. He was known for much of his work as in astronomy and math topics, but his biggest thing was the idea of coming up with the conics. It's from him that we get our concepts of the ellipse, the parabola, and the hyperbola. A fourth important person of the time was Heron, also known as Hero of Alexandria and he was there approximately from 10 to 70 AD. It's believed that he taught at the university, but it's not necessarily known because there's very little information about his actual life. Much of his work was very practical and applicable versus theoretical concepts. He created things like the steam engine and the vending machine and even a fire engine as well. Some of his mathematical concepts included finding the area of a triangle, 
and it's a formula that was considered to have been actually found by Archimedes, but he actually published in his book Metrica. So what we do is we take the three sides and we divide, add them together and divide by two. And then we're going to put all this into the formula above with the square root. So let's find area. Say this is the triangle I have. And the 3, 4, 5 triangle tells me this is a right triangle. So I know my two legs represent my base and my height. So if I do our standard formula, base times height, I would get that it would be 6. Now if I use his method, I add 3 plus 4 plus 5 and divide by 2, I get 6. Now I'll plug in 6 and then I'll plug in each of my legs here. So 6 minus 3, 6 minus 4, 6 minus 5. Simplify and I multiply and I get the square root of 36 which is 6. So either method I can find the area. The other thing that he found was the approximation for a square root of a non-square integer. So first you find the product of that integer, any two numbers that multiply to make that number. The first approximation, we just average the two numbers together. Then what we have to do for each successive approximation is that we're going to take the previous approximation, we're going to add the original number divided by the approximation and divide that by 2. And we can keep doing this as many times as we want until we get to a value that we're comfortable with. So if I look at the square root of 6, I know that's approximately 2 and 45 hundredths. And so if I did his approximations, in the, I could use 2 times 3 or even 6 times 1. So I'm going to use 6 times 1. I average them together and it's going to be 3 and a half. So that's my first approximation. My second approximation, I'm going to take the 3 and a half and I'm going to do 6 divided by the 3 and a half and divide that by 2 and it gets me about 2.6 so I'm getting closer. I do a third approximation using that new value I found of 7328 and it's good to use the fractions versus those rounded decimals so we can keep our answers as exact as possible and I get it down to about 2 and 4500 so you can see that even within three approximations we're very close to what the uh, value is for that square root.